Thanks very much, Omar. Um, yeah, so I mean, I'm hoping to give a little bit of context and uh, how the work this morning, all the awesome workflow uh, work that everyone described this morning is being used practically in, in the real world. Um, and so I just started to start off with some motivation. So if, if you were here two years ago, you and Bernie um, gave a, a talk, an awesome keynote here, and Ewan's one of the founders of the Open Violence Facts Foundation. And he also talked a week ago, uh, I think in Dublin at ISAG, and he talked about uh, this huge problem, moving analysis to the data, not the other way around. Um, and so I don't know about you, but I, I might have heard that before. And so uh, like I might want to do, I look back on Twitter, and uh, here's uh, DNA Nexus talking in 2013 about, hey, you don't got to move data anymore. You can just uh, move the analysis right there. And um, Stuart, in uh, 2014, this big change is coming. We're going to move all our analysis to the code to the, to the data, not the other way around. Well. Unfortunately, that hasn't happened yet, and um, we transfer a lot of data around. I think Nick Lohman's talking tomorrow, and he has—he often talks on Twitter about bioinformatics is uh, is um, advanced file copying, right? And um, so we transfer a lot of data around. And um, why why do we do this? Is it, it's not for fun, right? It's uh, because it's a lot of work to set up and configure analysis and get something to run. Um, and when you get it running on your system, you want to take it to some other system. You don't want to do all that pain again. And we're developing a tool that's trying to address these issues. Um, it's called BC Bio, and we try to address the first issue by being a community uh, building tools together. So practically, BC Bio is a set of a Python, bunch of Python uh, that integrates a ton of tools and uh, makes them scale and uh, provides resiliency. And in practice, what it does is tries to do the things that you need to do uh, for your analysis. So if you're doing variant calling, uh, it tries to do a great job of that. If you're doing RNA-seq or single cell or um, chip-seq or small RNA analysis, um, it tries to do all those things in a good way, and it tries to have the community working together to build one platform, um, one set of things that does a good job on those so you can pick it up and run it. Um, and that's cool, but what we'd like to do is be able to then take this and run it everywhere you want to run it. Um, and so what we need is good abstractions. And so we heard this morning about so how some of those abstractions are enabling this. So I won't belabor this, but um, it really helps a ton to have uh, some kind of definition of your workflow and then some kind of way of storing your um, code and your tools so that you can move it around reproducibly. And CWL and Docker uh, provide that. And BCBio has uh, CWL. Um, implementation of its workflow that that runs and what we've been doing uh, for the past I, I talked a little about this last year about work we we're doing and what we've been doing sort of for the past year is actually making it work in practice on a lot of places so this looks like a bunch of uh, this is a slide of a bunch of uh, a bunch of logos but what it actually is is a, a ton of work to get uh, BC Bio running in multiple places and if you've ever tried to do this um, with a complex workflow so you know running you know alignment and variant calling and QC and all these tools and putting them together and then outputting it in a bunch of different places. It's a lot, ton of work. And BCBio now you can take the CWL and run it in all these places and actually uh, move it between different analysis platforms. So it's not just a matter of like I'm running HPC or I'm running on somewhere else. It's a matter of, oh, I, you know, I happen to be running my stuff on seven bridges. All my data is on seven bridges. Could I run a BCBio workflow there? And as of like a week ago, right, the answer is uh, yes, you can. Um, and uh, uh, we're continuing to do more of that, um, so we're actively working on working with DNA Nexus to support that as well. Um, and the the Broad is talking. I think uh, Kate is here talking about Cromwell tomorrow, and I've been trying to convert uh, BC Bio to Whittle for a while, um, getting that working. And I think you'll hear about uh, you heard about Nexflow talking about their CDBL support that's ongoing, and Galaxy is also working on that as well. So I hope that by next time we'll have more of this uh, practical um, work, which is actually just helping us stop talking about bringing your, analysis to, bringing your analysis to the data and actually making it happen in practice so that when we come, we can talk about something different uh, next year. Um, that's done, right? And uh, now we're working on the next thing. And so the way that we're trying to do this is by, um, by, three, by two things, right? Uh, having community-built analysis, that's what BC Bio is. It's the community building things together by having workflows that, uh, that work together. Um, and that's the common workflow language and all the awesome GA4, GH uh, APIs that Brian talked about that build on top of that. And then having platforms that actually really support that. And what you're seeing here and, and you know, the talks this morning really show this is there's actually, the real thing that's happening is like there's a workflow language definition and people are actually supporting it and it can run and things are happening. And the, I think the GA4, GH execution challenge is a great example of how that's sort of making it practical and BCBio has a workflow in there. So if you're interested in all this, um, this is all 
uh, it's open source, freely available community. Let's do this. Um, and uh, those you can go to those links and get uh, more information and all the slides and everything from this. Thanks very much. Five minutes. <laughs>